Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back again to the channel and to another video. Today we are going to have a look at Firewall D. Firewall D is a very simple utility for managing your firewall on Arch Linux. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install it and how to manage it in three different ways. So let's get going. So here we are on Arch Linux. This is a normal installation. I just did a base install and installed the GNOME desktop environment, just an example. And before installing Firewall D, let me just give you a quick context about the firewall in Linux. So the Linux kernel includes NetFilter, which is a framework for network traffic operations, such as packet filtering and so on. The NetFilter framework is configured through multiple utility frameworks, like IP tables, ARP tables, and so on, which are nowadays deprecated. Now, there is another component in a Linux kernel, which is called NF tables. NF tables improves on NetFilter in that one of the big advantages is that it has a faster packet processing. And the second biggest advantage is that it basically includes one utility to configure everything, which is the NFT user space utility. Now, it's still a little bit complex, and that's why we have Firewall D. Firewall D is a firewall manager, and it's basically a front end for the NF tables framework. So this is a very quick overview on what's under Firewall D, but let's go ahead and install now the packages. So let's go ahead and open up the terminal and let me go here full screen and increase the font size. Now we want to install the packages. So let's type in sudo pacman-s. The first package is Firewall D and I'm going to install also IP set and the third package is EB tables. So then we can hit enter. And we can proceed with installation by hitting enter. There you go. The packages are now installed. So we can now start our firewall by typing in sudo systemctl enable dash dash now and then firewall d and hit enter. So this is basically going to enable the firewall when we boot the machine and started it right away. So let's clean up the terminal. Now, Firewall D has three main components. One is the zone, one is the service, and the third one are the ports. Although on the ports, we are not going to focus too much because most of the changes are going to be done through the services. And I definitely encourage you to work on the services because services are going to configure the ports directly as well. So we have now the firewall up and running. Let's check this out by typing in system CTL status firewall D. And you can see it's active and running. So what zones are actually available in Firewall D? Well, we can find out the zones that we have available to us by typing in sudo firewall-cmd and then dash dash get dash zones and hit enter. So you can see we have several zones. We have block, DMZ, drop external, and so on. Now, the default zone when you start the firewall is the public zone. I'm not going to go too much in detail about these zones because there is a man page for this, which is really well written. And I recommend you definitely to have a look at it. And you can type in, in the terminal man5 and then firewall d.zones and hit enter. Now explore this man page because it has a lot of information. So for example, which zones are available? So you see, for example, the drop zone, any incoming network packets are dropped. There is no reply, only outgoing network connections are possible and so on. The public zone, it's the one that starts by default in Firewall D. And as you can see here, the public zone is for use in public areas. You do not trust the other computers on networks to not harm your computer. Only selected incoming connections are accepted. So we have also, for example, the home zone, which is for use in home areas. You mostly trust the other computers on networks not to harm your computer. So depending on where you are, you might want to change this. Now let's get out from here by hitting Q. And let's list the services available in the public zone, which is again the default zone when you start Firewall D. We can do this by typing in sudo firewall cmd list service and hit enter. So you can see by default the public zone has the DHCPv6 client and SSH service available. Now, if you want to change the zone, let's say right now I'm at home, so I want to change this to the home zone. We can do that by typing in sudo firewall-cmd-set-default-zone equal home and hit enter. There you go. Now, if we list the service again, 
we will see in the home zone, we have two more services available. One is MDS and the other one is the Samba client service. So let's clean up the terminal. Now we are in the home zone. So let's see actually what services are available in the firewall that are not yet enabled. We can check which services are available by typing in sudo firewall dash cmd dash dash get dash services and it enter. So these are all the services available for firewall D. And let's see what we have here. We have, for example, HTTP and HTTPS. We have also FTP here. So let's say, for example, that we want to add FTP to the services in our home zone. How do we do this? Well, let's clean up the terminal first. And to add the FTP service on the home zone, we can type in sudo firewall dash CMD dash dash add dash service and then the service name, so FTP, and it enter. There you go. Now let's list again the services and you can see the FTP service is also available. Now pay attention to one thing. This command here basically enables the FTP service on runtime. That means only during the session. So if I would reboot the machine, the FTP service will be excluded from the firewall. So to make this permanent, we have to add one parameter. So let's pull up the last two commands here and we add the dash dash permanent parameter and we hit enter and the FTP service is going to be then in the firewall when we reboot our machine. Now to remove one service, let me pull up the last two commands here. We change add with, you guessed it, remove and hit enter. And you guessed it again, this is just on runtime. So if you want to remove it permanently, we need to add dash dash permanent and hit enter. Now, if we list again the services, you can see FTP is gone. So this is how you can change zones, add and remove services to your firewall. Now, as I said before, using services will take care of ports, so there is nothing else that you need to do. Now, one word of advice here, if you're using this on your main machine and you have also KVM installed with virtual machines in it, there is actually one service that you have to pay attention to. Let's check again the services available in Firewall D. You can see here we have the libvirt service. This is important if you have, as I said, KVM installed on your machine. And we have also one zone which is called libvirt. So what we need to do in order for your virtual machine to have network when you're using Firewall D, we need to set the libvirt service to the libvirt zone. So to do this, we can type in sudo firewall-cmd and then dash dash add dash service then the service name which is libvirt and then dash dash zone equal libvirt which is the name of the zone and then hit enter now i'm not going to do it here because i don't have kvm installed here and then if you want to make it permanent you can add dash dash permanent now let me add this command here and this is how you can work with services in Firewall D. Now, there is also a GUI which came already pre-installed when we installed the packages, and it's called firewall-config. To open it up, you can type in sudo firewall-config, and it enter. And this is the GUI. So let me go full screen here. And we have here basically the same options, just in a graphical environment. So as you can see, now we have our connections here. We have our zones right now i am on the home zone and it's in bold because it's the default one and pay attention also this is the runtime configuration and if we go on the permanent configuration it's going to be basically the same now if you want to make changes for example or runtime you can scroll through the services here and click the ones you want and it's going to be applied immediately but remember to do the same for permanent otherwise the services will be lost when you reboot your machine so it's very simple to use also the GUI. There is also a way here on how we can change the zone for the interface that we are using. Now let me close this up and let me show you another way that you can actually configure your firewall. Maybe you remember in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to use the cockpit on Arch Linux. And the cockpit, it's basically a dashboard that shows you an overview of your system. Let me install this very quickly by typing in sudo pacman-s and the package is cockpit and we need also package kit and then we can hit enter proceed with the installation here there you go 
Now we need to enable the socket, so we can type in sudo systemctl enable dash dash now cockpit.socket any tensor. There you go. So what we can do now, we can close up the terminal and open up our Firefox browser. And let me go full screen here and we can type in localhost colon 1990, which is the port where the cockpit is listening to. And we can hit enter and we can enter here with our username. So let's type in the username and the password and hit enter. So if you haven't seen the video about cockpit, I encourage you to go ahead and look at it so that you have more information about all these options. I'm not going to go through them in this video, but I want to go here under networking. And you can see here we have our firewall and the firewall is already active and there is one active zone. So let's edit this. Let's go to edit rules and zones. And you can see because we configure this in the terminal, we have the home zone available here with the services already activated. Now we can see some details about it. So we have here MDNS. MDNS provides the ability to use DNS programming interface and so on. And we can remove services from here or add them as well. For example, let's go ahead and add services and let's search for one. Well, let's search again for FTP and let's check here FTP and click add services. And there you go. We have now FTP working on port 21. Now let's check this in the terminal, which we have actually here. So we can type in, in here sudo firewall dash CMD and then dash dash list dash service and enter our sudo password and we can see here we have our FTP available. So I showed you here how to install Firewall D, how to manage it from the command line and with the GUI and also how to manage it with the cockpit. So this is Firewall D. It's a very nice package. It's very simple to configure. And if you try it out, let me know in the comments below how it's working for you. So there you go, guys. This is Firewall D. It's a very simple utility, but at the same time, it's also very powerful. If you tried it out, let me know in the comments below how it's working for you. I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.